We've shrunk our 16 driver playoff field down to 12, then to 8, and now down to our final championship four. We are now heading to Homestead, Miami for the championship race. You know, all the racing we've been doing since February uh, has all come down to this. How's it going everybody? My name is Eric and welcome to Out of the Groove. The way I have it planned currently, this is the final episode of the regular season. Of course, I'll have some stuff after the playoff race, after the championship race to kind of talk about the outcome of that. And I have a bunch of stuff planned for the off season, but as far as the regular season goes, gosh, more than, what is it, like 38 weeks when you count all the exhibition races? We've been doing this show several times a week. That's like 100 episodes at least. I'd have to check. Some of you have been watching since the beginning, so credit to you. Today's episode is going to be pretty data heavy, pretty statistic heavy. I'm going to be looking at stats from all four of our championship contending drivers. Going to try to weigh my options and give you guys the best predictions I possibly can for this championship race at Homestead, Miami. So get your notebooks ready because I'm going to tell you how you can win that bet with Uncle Al or whoever. <laughs> Let's start by looking at our final four competitors. That's right, after the wild, the surprisingly wild race at ISM Raceway, we're down to Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Martin Truex Jr., and Joey Logano as the four drivers moving on. I mentioned a couple days ago how this is maybe one of your best case scenarios for a Final Four. There's a lot of drama, a lot of interesting storylines among these four. I mentioned how, you know, the Truex storyline, trying to go out a winner as his team is closing down, kind of a tragic, heroic tale, perhaps. You got the drama between him and Logano. Kyle Busch and Joey Logano have never liked each other that much. Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, two of the veterans of the sport who are very polarized in the NASCAR community. I think this is a great Final Four, uh, and I think it's only going to produce a great, great, great uh, few days of buildup before the championship race. And before we dive heavily into numbers, I want to talk about the playoff system that produced this Final Four, you know, all year long, really ever since this current playoff format has been introduced the last few years, you know, a lot of fans have criticized it, it doesn't crown the real legitimate champion, oh, it's too easy for a great driver to get knocked out early, oh. As you'll see in these stats in a moment, uh, these four drivers that ended up making it to Homestead, uh, we're the top four drivers all year in pretty much every major statistic. So this is another year, and pretty much seems like every year since this playoff form has been introduced, it's another year where the playoff system got it right. So I don't want to hear next year how this playoff system you know, promotes mediocrity. No. Yeah, you got to be the top four or five guys in the sport to have a chance at Homestead. That's how it is. That's how it's been every year since 2014. Except maybe the year Ryan Newman snuck in. I feel like every single Final Four contender has been pretty darn legitimate. And this year is no different. So I just wanted to get that out of the way for any of you playoff naysayers. But now let's look at some stats. I'll start with Joey Logano. He was the first guy to technically advance into the championship round after winning at Martinsville. You can see his 2018 season statistics right there, at least some of the most notable ones. Two wins, a 10.9 average finish, third best in uh, the Cup Series. I put this interesting stat, and I'm going to do this for all four of these guys, uh, his intermediate track finish. That's me. I went in and looked at every single finish he had at mile and a half racetrack specifically this year, and I averaged them out and looked at what we had. He didn't win any intermediate track races this year, any mile and a half races, uh, but he does have a very impressive average finish of 7.7. .7. I think that's something that should be noted because Homestead Miami, the race track that we're going to be at this weekend for the championship, is a mile and a half intermediate. That's why I'm putting that stat up there. Joey Logano's stats across the board here, he's been very low key this season. Only those two wins, and you know one of them was a restrictor plate race, but he's been quietly and calmly one of the top three most consistent drivers all year. That's how he got into this round, really. And that's why he's a guy you shouldn't take lightly at Homestead. Sure, he maybe doesn't show off the lightning quick speed that Kevin Harvick or Kyle Busch have been able to do on some weeks, uh, but you know he's going to be there at the end. He's not going to make a big mistake that, or his team's not going to make a mistake that takes him out of it. When we get to, I don't know how many laps this race is, like 300 or 400, I don't know how many, like 267, I think. When we get to lap 266, he's going to be at least around the, or in that top five somewhere, sniffing the lead, so you can't count Joey Logano. I don't think that's a team that's going to beat themselves. From Logano now, I'll move on to Martin Truex Jr. Four wins this season. He's the defending NASCAR Cup Series champion, so he's right back where he belongs. You look at his numbers this year, uh, 996 uh, laps led, that's third best in the Cup Series, almost hit that 1,000 mark, I guess he still has a race to do it. Again, you look at his intermediate numbers, 7.2 average finish, slightly better than Joey Logano's, and he also has a win that came at Kentucky over the summer, which... Of all the intermediate tracks, it's maybe the one that's the least like Homestead, but still, it is a mile and a half win, and this is something I want to note with Truex. I know he's the defending champion, I know he's, you know, a great feel-good story with his team closing down at the end of the year, it's great to see him make it back to the championship race, but I'm a little hesitant to pick him as a top championship contender, uh, because let's compare his numbers, you know, especially his intermediate numbers, to last year. Last year, he dominated the mile and a half, so, like, he was just a no-brainer. When we went to a mile and a half track, Martin Truex Jr. was going to lead a lot of laps. Seven of his eight wins last year came out that mile and a half. So when we went to Homestead last year, I think a lot of people had Truex as their favorite. He was the clear favorite in my opinion, and that's why he ultimately went on to win the race. Seven mile and a half wins. You compare that with this year, 
only the one. I think most people would agree that furniture racing is not as good now as they were this time a year ago. I think part of that probably has to do with the whole kind of lame duck season they're going with, with a lot of these guys looking for new jobs, a lot of them possibly out of jobs for next year. Clearly their focus isn't 100% on racing, at least not completely. They, no matter what they tell you, some part of them is distracted. Truex's numbers this season are great. His mile and a half uh, stats are still great. He has a win, you know, a 7.2 average finish is nothing to scoff at. But the problem is, I'm just, I'll, you'll look at these next two guys, I don't think he's your champion favorite next year or for this year uh, he's just not the numbers are not nearly as dominant as he was last year so with that being said let's look at Kyle Busch now the other Toyota in this final four look at his numbers this season remember last year in 2017 Kyle Busch also made it to the championship race and he finished second to Truex in that battle this year though you look at those numbers eight wins oh my his 8.4 average finish without a doubt leads the cup series he's second in laps led but look at those intermediate stats Whew. A 5.2 average finish as well as three. Three wins? That's definitely something to note. And he is coming off a win this last weekend at ISM. Not a mile and a half by any means, but he's got some momentum, positive vibes going his way. You look at these numbers, Kyle Busch has been the most consistent driver uh, all season long. He started the year, like seven of the first eight races, I think he finished in the top three. Yeah, in fact, it was seven straight top three finishes at the beginning of the season early on. So Kyle Busch has been the most consistent driver this year. That's why his average finish is the best in the series. That's why he's led a ton of laps. And that's why he has eight wins. That's a lot of wins. Obviously, this first half of the year was all about the big three with him, Kevin Harvick, Martin Truex Jr. just gobbling up wins left and right. Ever since, you know, July, August, they've cooled down a lot. But most notably, Kyle Busch is the only one who's still been winning on a semi-regular basis. Martin Truex Jr. has not won a race since mid-July. And Kevin Harvick, the other big three driver, hasn't won a race legally since Loudon, also in July. So when you factor those two things in, in the meantime, Kyle Busch has actually nabbed a couple wins. He's been the only quote-unquote big three driver that's still, you know, consistently been running near the front and has actually broken through to win races. So you look at those consistent stats this year, you know, Kyle Busch, he's not really what I think of as like a cool, calm, consistent driver. He's like the flashy driver. who He might wreck a lot, but he's going to get a lot of wins and make it look cool while he does it. This year has not really been that way for him. He's been consistent. You know, the average finish shows it, the lap led shows it. He's been, especially in these playoffs, he's just been kind of lurking. He's going to need to show that winning speed he did earlier in the season to win at Homestead, but uh, you can't take your eyes off that M&M's car. Kevin Harvick is the final driver in this final four. Uh, also eight wins for him. I put a little asterisk next to it because two of those wins, it's worth noting, later became encumbered. You know, he was found to have a failing car in post-race inspection, so two of those wins actually did not count for bonus points. So he's got six legit wins. You know, the one at Texas was pretty much a blatant penalty, an illegal car, uh, but still... Technically, he does have eight wins, I guess, in the record book, so I'm going to leave it as eight, but I'm putting that asterisk there. A 9.0 average finish is second only to Kyle Busch. Those laps led, though, by far the most in the Cup Series this year. Those intermediate stats are a little inflated. I know his average finish is 10.5, which is actually the worst of these four drivers. That's because of a couple races where he was involved in wrecks. Uh, he does have four wins, as you can see there, which is the most of any of these playoff drivers at intermediate track. So Kevin Harvick, while the average finish may not show it, he's been arguably the best at intermediate tracks this year. It's between him and Bush. Consistency, I'll give the nod to Kyle Bush, but obviously Harvick has more wins, and he did win on a mile and a half very recently at Texas. I know he had an illegal spoiler, so... You know, we can put that asterisk by it, we can note that, but uh, truth be told, four cars had a lot of speed, mile and a half's reward speed. He probably was going to have a top three car, even if he didn't have an illegal spoiler. So Kevin Harvick's been great at intermediate tracks this year. Uh, he's been just great overall. He's been the one driver that I feel like just... At times, he looks virtually unbeatable. Like even Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., Logano, when they're at their best, you know, you still feel like someone might be able to beat them. There's a couple times this year, especially early in the season, where when Kevin Harvick was at his best, you just felt like all hope was lost. I've really never seen a driver demoralize, I feel like, the whole fan base and the other competitors like that since maybe Jimmy Johnson during his five-year championship run. The one thing to note about Kevin Harvick, obviously his stats are fantastic, uh, but I got some question marks about that pit crew. You know, they call Harvick the closer, but sometimes that pit crew does not help him close any deals. They don't do him favors sometimes, and this team has a history of kind of beating themselves. You know, they had one of the best cars, probably had the best car at Kansas a few weeks back, and beat themselves ultimately. Even this last race at ISM, you know, that's his best track, and yeah, he started on pull at a lot of laps, but then he had a flat tire and from that point forward was really never better than a fifth place car. The four team, while they've looked unbeatable at times this year, right now, I feel like they're vulnerable. And, you know, going into this championship race, I don't know how to feel about them. Their numbers are fantastic, but a lot of those wins, those four wins, most of those came in the beginning of the season. The four intermediate wins, I mean. Actually, all those wins. Like I said, he hasn't won a race legally, excluding Texas. He hasn't won a legal race since Loudon in July. 
That's months without a legal win to his credit. You know, people like to joke when I say the Big Three is dead. I'm basically giving you the stats to prove it. Big Three has not been a thing since since July. So there you have it. I've given you the four uh, playoff drivers, their general 2018 stats. I want to look at their Homestead Miami stats briefly. I'll just throw them all up at the screen at the same time. You know, just give you their average finish, the amount of wins in their career, because they're all pretty even. Bush Harvick and Truex have all won at Homestead Miami one time each in their career. Uh, Logano has never won. There is a big disparity, however, when we look at average finish at this track. And I know there's a lot of things that factor into average finish. For, for example, Kyle Busch is, is highly inflated because he had three bad races in a row from his rookie season through his first two years in the sport. But there you see Kevin Harvick with a a great career average finish at Homestead. He's been consistent here, so it's safe to say they're not going to, you know, miss the setup this weekend. I know he's got a backup crew chief, but they're probably going to have a good setup under him. He's not going to suck or something. I'd be surprised if any of these four drivers just miss the setup and run 20th all day. I expect them all around the top five, pretty much start to finish. But you can look at these Homestead Miami stats, you can factor them in a little bit. You know, the last few years, all these guys have been in the final four. Truex has been in it a couple times, Bush, Harvick as well, Logano's even been in it a couple times. Three of these guys on this list, Truex, Harvick, and Kyle Busch, have all won their first career champion under this current format. Logano's been in the Final Four a couple times uh, and has not been able to break through just yet. He was really close in 2016 before the issue with Carl Edwards on the final or the second to last restart. Uh, so he's looking for a bit of redemption, perhaps. That's what I'm saying when I talk about how this championship race really has a lot of interesting storylines going into it. A lot of things to look for, a lot of different guys to root for in this case. I feel like we're all going to have different rooting interests, and that's going to be fun. At the end of the day, though, you can look at all those stats. You can look at the stats I showed you a second ago. Who is my pick to be your 2018 uh, NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series champion? I'm going to stick with the guy I've been picking since since before the playoffs even started. Kyle Busch is going to be your 2018 champion. He's going to get his second career Cup Series championship. Uh, I think it's going to be competitive, though. In the last few years with this format, I feel like every championship race, there's like two clear favorites. Like last year, it was Kyle Busch and Martin Truex Jr., and sure enough, they ran one, too. This year, however, I feel like any of these four could show up with the best equipment. I don't, I, I just, I'm not confident. I'm not extremely confident in making one solid prediction. Like, I'm picking Kyle Busch to win, but I'll be honest, Kevin Harvick, I've showed you his stats. I could make a case for Kevin Harvick. He's going to be really good. I think Martin Jurek is going to be really good. I think Joey Logano is going to be really good. They've had time to work on their equipment since, uh, since their win at Martinsville. I just feel like these four drivers, it would not surprise me if they finished first through fourth. I feel like this is the most even championship race field we've had since this format was introduced in 2014. But anyway, like I said, Kyle Busch is my pick. He was my pick before the playoffs started. Uh, he's been up and down, hit or miss in these playoffs. He hasn't shown as much winning speed as, I, as I'd like him to show. Uh, he, ha he does have two wins in these playoffs, both at one mile or less tracks, ISM and Richmond. This is a big fast track. He didn't show a whole lot of speed at Texas. He had you know issues on pit road and stuff, so we never really got to see how good that car was. So that's got me a little concerned. But if he can bring it back that speed he had early in this season, he's been great at Homestead in his past. Uh, he almost won this race a year ago. Kyle Busch, he, he's my pick. I'm sticking with him. Kevin Harvick with the backup crew chief and the fact that his team often gets in his way, he, that's why I'm not picking him. I'm not too confident. Joey Logano just has not shown the winning speed the way Truex, Bush, and Harvick have shown consistently this year. He only has two wins, whereas these other guys have just cleaned, cleaned house. He's going to have to have some things go right for him to win the race. And then Martin Truex Jr. just has not had the intermediate track success these other guys have had. Uh, you know, Especially when last year he had great, great, great intermediate success and barely won the championship. He hasn't really had any intermediate success this year. I don't see him going back to back. That would be tough. I just don't see it. But like I said at the beginning, you could make a case for any of these four gentlemen. Uh, my pick, however, is Kyle Busch, but I'd like to know who you guys have down below. Let me know who your championship picks are. I'd be excited to hear. Whew. But anyway, guys, that is my show. The final episode of the NASCAR Cup Series regular season. What a year it's been. I want to thank everyone who's watch these videos, supported this series, uh, whether you've been only watching a week or two or since July or February, whatever I was trying to say, Daytona in February. I really appreciate the support. This is th technically the third year of me doing Out of the Group, and this is the first year where I've really dedicated this much time to it, and I've been thrilled by how much it's grown. I hope you've enjoyed watching all these months. Uh, like I said, I'm not going anywhere during the off season. I have a few special Out of the Group episodes planned for you know later November, December, and even January. Hopefully I'll have some other NASCAR related content, maybe some old stuff you've seen on this channel before. I'll be bringing some of that back. Uh, there's still going to be plenty of racing content up until the Daytona 500 in February, so you're not going to be bored. But I do want to say thank you to everyone who's been supporting Out of the Groove all season long. 
you guys are the best, and I really appreciate it. So thanks everyone for watching this video. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram. I'm gonna go through my general <laughs> outro. I basically haven't memorized it at this point. You can also sponsor the show, like Michael Harrison, Cameron James, and Tice Moore, and the rest of our amazing Patreon supporters. This is also something that I'm super, super appreciative. It's grown so much in the last uh, few months this, since the show has really taken off. And uh, I appreciate the support from you guys. It really helps me out directly, and it means a lot. Hope to see all of you guys back next season. Of course, I'll have a video coming out the, pretty much the same day of the championship race. I'll give you my reaction to that. And uh, of course, I'll have some, some videos, uh, some more episodes next week. We'll have the actual out of the group season finale next week. So, hope you guys are excited for that. I'm excited for the off season uh, almost as much as I'm excited for this championship race. I got a lot of fun things planned. I think you will all enjoy. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully, you guys all enjoy the Homestead race this weekend. Should be a fun finale. At least I hope it will be. I think there's going to be no shortage of drama. It's going to be a. I think it's going to be a pretty fitting wrap to what's been a pretty thrilling playoff so far. So, thank you all for watching. Uh, this is me, Eric, saying bye-bye for the last time in this regular season.